Good morning YouTube. Trevor here, something or nothing. Welcome to another edition of Bit Enough More Than I Can Chew. This week, I'm gonna be mostly walking across Dartmoor in a day. So, we're at Oakhampton side. We're gonna walk all the way down to Ivy Bridge in a day. Just set me view range going now. Even though I have been walking for 24 minutes, I left my house at five o'clock in the morning. It's now 5.24. So what we gotta do is find our route. Dartmoor, north to south. Ping. Start route. Start from here. I think we call it hiking. We're off. Here we go. Now today, I'll let you know, it's gonna be no tripod shots. I'm not doing any additional Dartmoor miles today, no way. I've got 30 miles to do. I've probably just done a mile or so to get here, and it's all uphill. So I'm pretty knackered to start with. I've got my new rucksack on my back. I've got me North Face fleece on, sweating buckets. <laughs> I feel like I've been walking for a day already. Clouds looking ominous over there. It's a uh, chance of rain for the first hour, but then it's cloudy and sunny all day, so, and cooler today. Just not when you're lugging all your luggage on your back. <laughs> I started spotting. You can hardly see West Mill Tour. I've got my waterproofs on, put my bag cover on, prepared then, don't we, when it rains. It's a really interesting looking cloud. The sun rising. Well, there's like these dark rain clouds about. But look out across here now. You see it all lighting up gold across there. It's nice. All right, we're coming up under Route Hall now. Onto the more proper from here. sort of kind of cut down by East Oakmont farm and uh, head out to Hangingstone Hill from there all uphill to Hangingstone Hill long road ahead the Oak Tour Steeperton Tour East Mill Tour to the side here 6.24 now, an hour since I've entered the moor. We're beneath East Mill Tor, three miles in. The Jurassic Coast Mighty Hike, I think took me between 10 and 11 hours, and that was 27 miles. So I think 12 hours would be good. Might be a bit optimistic, including lunch stops and things. Yeah, I'm hoping by seven o'clock, eight o'clock at the latest, I should make it to Ivy Bridge, tired and depleted. There's something in my backpack, digging into my back, it's doing my head I think it's my stove, the jet boil. Feels like it's tipped up a bit, and the corner of it, the lid, the lip, is digging in my back. So we're underneath Steeperton Tor now. See up there? I've lost the track. <laughs> yeah, we're just carving our way down this bank. So this is where I was a few weeks ago at the end of lockdown. Realised I'd lost my sunglasses right along this stretch. Hanging Stone Hill is the next stop. And by then we should be about a fifth of the way in. See now up beside us is Wild Tour over there. And then up here you can see the box coming into view of Hanging Stone Hill. 
So we've left the tracks now. We're heading up Hangingstone Hill. Hopefully the clouds stay away because we don't want to be disorientated today. Hangingstone Hill. Oh, get out of the way of the wind. That's the majority of the climbing done this morning. It's downhill for a bit now. Clouds coming in. This will be the last time now we see these views, so one last look. You can also see Watton Tour up over there. Oh. Typical, this weather's going to come in now. Look at it, surrounded by mist. <laughs> Shit. Right, we're here, Hangingstone Hill. You can see over to Whitehorse Hill. Very marshy in between. As you sort of carve around the peaked pass. Doesn't look very nice. I think we'll be sticking to View Ranger for a little while across that. I've just uh, had a play around in my bag because something was no niggling me. It was me, me jet ball. So I've moved that, put me down jacket down the back. So hopefully it won't be too annoying. Put some gaiters on because it's going to be boggy along here. Just realised, I don't know what's happened or how this has happened, but they're two different gaiters. See that? Grey, black. That one's got a zip. That one's just Velcro. So yeah, not quite sure what's happened there. But I've also got my hiking poles out. Don't know what we're going to find down here. So far, dare I say, seems to be quite a clear track, which is ideal. Now we're coming up to the Peak Pass. If it's like this, all through this bit, I'll be happy. This stone marks crossing through the peat, which may be of use to hunting and cattlemen. The crossing was made by Frank Philpotts, who died October 1909. We're walking at quite a speed at the moment. It's not too bad terrain, not too bad underfoot. The mist and clouds haven't come in yet. And this is all new, all new territory for me. So quite a lot of the 365 will be crossed off today. See Kestrel Rock over there, just off the side of Fernwithy Forest. I don't know what all these tours are in front of me yet. But one of them is going to be Sitterford. And I've got a feeling it might be that one there, up by the wall. I've not been there yet. The girls went there when they done uh, struggling for nothing. It's also worth mentioning, obviously, if you don't know, I'm doing this for charity, for the hospice care. So there's a link to my Just Giving page below. It's part of an ongoing uh, fundraising, raising money to go to the Himalayas, which was going to be this year. It's been postponed. So no matter when you're watching this video, even if you're watching this a year after I've done this walk, you should still be able to donate because uh, we are flying out in October 2021 now. So if you're watching this and you think, well done Trev, good challenge, worthy, worthy cause, look below the Just Giving page. If it's still active, then uh, ping us over some money. Just put on it for your Dartmoor in a day, well done, something like that in the comment, just in case there's something else going on. It doesn't get so confusing for me then. Here we are now, Quinton's Man Cairn. There it is. Two more little huts over here. Next, we're sort of heading over to Sitterford Tor. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it over there. We've got up now, we start to see ahead of us and around us over there. Beautiful. That's the best part of these walks, isn't it? Coming over the brow of the hill, seeing the land unfold before you. Yeah. 
so sit for tour with a little bit over 20 miles left to go we're practically a third of the way through so not bad going now I just got to work out which way I'm going see over there the grey weathers stone circle I was supposed to miss that there was meant to be a track carving across there but it's not too far out of my way and then we pick up the bridle way that goes through this stone circle bit of a diversion not even a mile I shouldn't think so so we get to see the stone circle so the grey weather stone circle so two stone circles right next to each other they're quite impressive size as well aren't they and they're very defined you don't get many some of the uh, stone circles and stone rows on Dartmoor aren't that defined but these impressive now we're heading down into this sort of valley down here and then through the forestry beside it Belliver Forest and then I think that is Belliver Tor you can see standing up above the trees there it started <laughs> oh we've got to navigate up along this beside this in this valley uh, I've just checked view range I'm on the wrong side of the river but I'm hoping I can get back on track it looks like if I follow this track it will lead me up to a wall I can use the wall to cross and get back on the track right I'm getting back on track you can see where I've got to cross over it's all going in the same direction anyway so it's not like I've walked miles of course right I've crossed the river there's a lot more gorsy this side I'm wondering now if I should have stayed over there <laughs> I'm sort of meandering around all this gorse. It's quite overgrown. Not very nice. I'm very hot in the long air. Stop for a drink at some point and take my coat off again. Well, we're coming up now to Heartland Tour, but we're still moving in the right direction. That bit was hard going. I was enjoying myself until then because it's been such an uneven ground the roof of my foot, I don't know what you'd call it the top of my foot and now I'm starting to ache a bit which is good because we've only got another 20 miles to go <laughs> but it's fine positive mental attitude alright so we've made it to post bridge now so we've got about 18 miles to go but that was a slow couple of miles there that was hard work. Hopefully it gets a bit easier than that. Right, we've made it into Belliver Forest now. So we're going to carve up through the middle of the forest, come out by Belliver Tor. And then we're getting near halfway by then. Well, there's the way forward. Looks daunting from here. This morning we seem to be ploughing through the miles, but they don't seem to be moving very fast at the moment. I don't want to stop. I'm scared. Don't want to have time to get through. I'll just get some water out of my bag, have a drink, and head in. Out over there somewhere. Right, so I'm leaving Belliver. And I'm a bit fidgety. I'm getting a bit bit teasy everything's cluttery trying to charge my phone up that keeps falling out microphone on the camcorder is rattling like hell it's snapped hiking poles getting the fucking way I keep veering off track because there is no track I'm a bit worried it's gonna only gonna get worse calm calm right so we're carving away from Bellevator, Bellevator on them. Laughter tour over here beside us. There seems to be a big, large, flat, monolithic stone over here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Monolithic stone. Going mad. But we keep going. We keep going. Well, we're getting off the moor now for a minute. That was a long, long journey through there and I took the wrong route. So I came off the track, added some more mileage on. Weaving in around some paths out Hexworthy, Huckabee area. 
beautiful spot here. Lovely and quiet. Let's go over these stepping stones then. Well, it's one o'clock. Seems a good place to stop for some lunch. It's raining now, I've had my dinner. Now the rain's coming, mm. just as I'm leaving. Got a feeling, yeah, we've got to go over home, hole and more. So we're back on our way. We're heading up this way, underneath Coombstone Tor. About 14 miles left. Still a decent walk, isn't it? I've walked all that. Crazy, isn't it? It's Coombstone Tor. I don't think I've ever been there. It's right by a massive car park. But this is all you're going to get to see of the tours today, I'm afraid, from a distance. This is the stretch that I've been dreading, if I'm honest. It looks quite bleak on the map and it's all uphill, but at least it's sunny. I've come from Belleville. It's a long climb up this hill, but look, hey door coming to view now. Saddle tour and Ripon tour. Benford over there, reservoir. Keep moving, I guess. Up on the top of Home Ridge now. It's leveled out a bit, but uh, yeah. This is a boggy area, but uh, featureless. Not a lot up here, barren. So hopefully we'll be able to see in a minute where we're heading for and uh, head there. Well, here we go. Riders Hill, trig point. That was a long hill up there. Let's get up, see the trig. Touch. I am a Dalek. Riders Hill. Jeez, sweet. Oh, I'll have a breather. Pooper's Hill next. Might be over there. Right, well, I met a family on uh, Riders Hill back there, and they've come from Pooper's Hill and Snowden Way, and they said it's horrendous boggy. So I'm doing a bit of a diversion now. I'm heading straight over to Huntington Warren along this ridge line. You can see it's the nipple up on the hill over there. We love a nipple on a hill, don't we? And it basically cuts out all of this circle. I'm probably saving myself a mile or two, straight over, and then down the bank to the Clapper Bridge at the bottom. Yeah, I'm quite happy to cut a bit out. <laughs> so we're about to reach the big cairn on the top of Huntington Warren. It's a fair old distance I've walked, just from that point. By the time we get down the bottom, of the hill at the Clapper Bridge, we really will be in the final stretch. Huntington Warren. No, look, the Avon Dam. So that nipple up there, me and Tom have been there when we went looking for the falls, I can't remember what they're called. Okay, so I'm carving down the bank now. Hopefully a clapper bridge will come into view before too long. We've got to head for that. Oh, I must say, it's not doing my foot any favours coming down here. I don't know what it is, the top of my foot is raw. But, you know me, I don't like to go on about it. Just get on with it. 
got no bloody choice, have I? <laughs> yeah. Made it to the Clapper Bridge. That wasn't the nicest terrain to come down there, to be honest. Pretty sure this is the Clapper Bridge where me and Tom sat, had a coffee. Because I remember people running down that bank. So yeah, pretty sure I've been here. Broad Falls is up there. If I'm correct, if not, I'm wrong. Now we've got to carve up this valley and then try and find a route across here. That's where we were. We walked all that over to there and then down that. Okay, this is it now, final leg. Really is. We're on the two moors way now, up to the marker stone. Bearing up all right, I'm bearing up all right. Beautiful views. I love the way that the rivers snake through the hills. And then over behind that, that's Plymouth Sound, where I walked last week. I did that. Here we are. Left Lake Myers. Got five miles left. It's got colder now. Colder and windier. Wish I bought a woolly hat. The wind is whipping, whipping. But surprisingly, I feel fine. Got all these tender spots that I'm afraid is gonna seize up when I stop. But I'm enjoying it. I could do it again. I think that's Sharp Tour over there, where Nathan and I walked when we'd done up for a beacon and out that way, Western Beacon. Walked all the way to Sharp Tour to, to camp. And there was someone there. <laughs> and they threw a paddy and we walked back. Camped at Hanging Shell Rock. Oh, but there's something to look at up there. Hanging Shell Rock. Can you see? Who no, no. Okay, so we're leaving the track. We've got less than one and a half miles left. Got to make my way down to the college. And that's where my wife is going to pick me up. I'm going to seize up in the car. I'll have trouble getting out the other end, I can tell you. Well, here we go. About to leave Dartmoor. Oh, half of Moor. And we're through. We've done it. Dartmoor in a day. Done. That was it. I did it. Thank you everyone who's sponsored me. Anyone who hasn't and would like to, just give him the link below. And uh, also if you're new to something or nothing, give us a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you all next time for something a bit easier next time. Cheers.